Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells. And to do this we're going to look at the organelles found in those cells, the ones that are common to both plant and animal cells being the cell membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm, mitochondria and vacuoles which are common but a little bit different, and the ones that are only found in plant cells being the cell wall and chloroplasts. I'm going to concentrate on the organelles that can be seen with the light microscope, uh, but I'm going to include one in there which you generally can't see with the light microscope, which is the mitochondria, because it is a very important organelle, uh, and we'll get into why that is so important a little, in a little bit. Uh, so firstly, what are organelles? So the word organelle comes from little organs. Uh, so if you think of a cell, like an organism has organs in it, a cell has organelles in it. And those organelles have a specific function. Now some organelles can be seen with the light mi microscope, but not many. Others we need an electron microscope. And in this video we're going to concentrate on those with, that can be seen with the light microscope. And then we're going to throw mitochondria in, uh, because they're fairly important for life. So I'm going to start off with organelles that are common to both plant and animal cells. So firstly, the cell membrane. So this is a layer that surrounds the cell and it holds all the contents of the cell in and keeps the things that are outside the cell out. Now it is semi-permeable, meaning that things can pass in and out of it, uh, but not everything does. So as far as the cell membrane goes, you can think of this as the skin surrounding the cell. Uh, another thing common to both is the nucleus. Now this is the brain of the cell. This is where the genetic information is and it controls all the functions uh, that happen within the cell by sending messages from that inside the nucleus uh, that where that genetic information is out into the cell uh, where the other organelles actually carry out uh, those jobs based on the information from the nucleus. Another common one is the cytoplasm. Now the cytoplasm is all the uh, basically water inside the cell. It's everything in the cell that isn't an organelle itself. So it's not quite an organelle, uh, but important nonetheless. Now its function is to have dissolved uh, things in it uh, that can be moving around the cell. So it might have glucose dissolved in it, might have oxygen dissolved in it, that is then used uh, in the cell. Uh, so if we think about this, we, uh, we could probably name this the juices or the jelly of the cell. Uh, mitochondria are also common to both plants and animals, and they're very, very important because that's where the respiration occurs. And respiration is a very important reaction in living things, which provides the cell with the energy that it needs to perform all the functions that cells perform. So we refer to the mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell. Now, as I said before, mitochondria uh, cannot be seen under a light microscope. Uh, they can only be seen under an electron microscope. Uh, I've just put these in here because they are super important. Uh, now, vacuoles are something that is present in both plant and animal cells, but they're fairly different in the way that they appear. So in a plant cell, you're going to have one or two vacuoles, and it's going to take up most of the volume of the cell. And in some cells, this can be 80 or 90 percent. Animals vacuoles, on the, or animal cell vacuoles, on the other hand, uh, have lots of little vacuoles. The basic function of vacuoles is pretty much the same. Uh, they're basically like the stomach of the cell, and they are a way of storing things like water, dissolved nutrients, um, as well as wastes that need to be expelled from the cell. Uh, so this is something that is common to both, uh, but different and will appear differently. And you'll be able to see this difference under the light microscope. Now we're going to get into some of the things that can only be seen in plants. And the first one is the cell wall. So on the outside of the cell membrane, plant cells have another layer called the cell wall. Now this is a layer of a material called cellulose. And this is basically when you make something out like when you have wood, uh, that wood is the cellulose left over from those cells. 
This provides structure to the cell as well as providing structure to the plant. So unlike uh, animals or most animals that have a, a skeleton, uh, whether it's an inside or an exoskeleton, uh, plants don't have a skeleton. So their uh, rigidity comes from the cell wall surrounding each individual cell. And that's what stops the plant from falling over. So we can think about this as the skeleton of the cell. Another one that is only found in plants are the chloroplasts. And similar to the mitochondria, uh, an important rea chemical reaction occurs here. And in this case, it is photosynthesis, which is the way that plants are able to harness the energy from the sun and turn that energy into sugar, which they can then use as a food source. And importantly, uh, that we can use as a food source if we were to eat plants or eat something that ate a plant. Now the chloroplasts have a special pigment in them that allows this photosynthesis to occur and that pigment is called chlorophyll and that's what gives uh, plants their green colour. Uh, so this is the food source for the cell and remember only in plants. In this video we have looked at plant and animal cells and in particular we've looked at the organelles or the little organs inside these cells. Uh, We've looked at the ones common, the cell membrane holding the contents of the cell together, the nucleus providing genetic instructions for the cell, the cytoplasm taking up the space inside the cell that is not taken by the other organelles, the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell, uh, vacuoles which are found uh, in both plant and animal but they are large and small in number so one or two big ones in plant cells while lots and lots of little ones in animal cells. Uh, the cell wall giving structure and rigidity to plant cells and the chloroplasts where photosynthesis occurs. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.